Running on the track can have many benefits as part of a structured training plan and it can also make your run training a little bit more social. If you've never run on a track before, you might think it's a bit daunting, but it's not. You don't have to be fast to run on a track, anyone can do it. But there's a few things you need to know before you step onto the track, which we'll cover in this video. Yeah, so we're here to guide you through the do's and don'ts so you're ready to take your training to the next level. So it's worth considering your clothing when you're heading to the track and it's important to feel comfortable but have enough range of movement so you can run fast. And the best thing about the track, you're going around in circles so you can just take anything extra that you don't need off and leave it in a pile where it's pretty safe. Yeah, and I think for the warm up, you want to leave a few layers on because literally you want to warm up during that phase. But when it comes to the main session, you probably want to strip down into a t-shirt and shorts because you're going to warm up quite quickly. But then after your session, you're going to get pretty cold. So put those layers back on. If you've seen athletics on the television, you might think, oh my gosh, I need to go and buy some spikes in order to run on the track. But you don't actually need to. Your ordinary trainer, something like this, will do the job perfectly. Probably best to avoid cross-country shoes because you don't actually need any extra grip on the track. Yeah, I think I'd reinforce that point on spikes as well. You don't need them. For me, it's a big no-no. You're probably going to cause yourself more injury problems than that's good. And if you want to feel that little bit faster, just wear some racing flats. Well, before you head to your local track, worth just checking the timetable it works a little bit like a swimming pool so you might find it's just free running open to anyone you can go and have a go other times clubs might have hired it out and if there is a club why don't you contact them and see if you can join in and you might make some new running friends and make it a little bit more fun definitely and also if you finish work and it's dark outside and you're a bit worried about running on the streets then a floodlit track is probably going to be the best place for you to run so as always, when you're coming somewhere new, you need to think about safety. And the rules of track are to begin with, you need to be going anti-clockwise. So running to the left. And also, when you're crossing the track, look both ways, because someone could be just hurtling towards you. Yeah, and also when it comes to the inside of the track, you've got to respect this area. It might look like a nice bit of grass for doing your stretches on, or the sand pit, or the high jump you think's good to go and lie in. But actually, it's quite often in use, and it's a sure way to annoy people. But also, you could get hurt if there's a javelin or a shot put being hurled your way. If you're told by your coach to go and run in lane one, they mean the inside lane. Now, tracks are normally six to eight lanes wide, starting in one, going outwards as the numbers go up. However, if you get to a track and you've got some of these in lane one, that means lane one's out of bounds because they're trying to protect it, getting worn out. So in that case, you'll have to switch to an outside lane like lane two. And then it's worth bearing in mind, if you're doing 800s, for example, two laps of the track will suddenly be a little bit more than 800. So bear that in mind when you're looking at your watch. When you first come to a track, it can be a little confusing as there's lines everywhere, but actually there's only a few that you really need to know. Yeah, and some of them are quite useful, like this one for instance. It's a solid white line and these will be staggered every 100 metres around the track, which is quite useful for pacing when you want to dial in that first 400 metres. Yeah, and if you are having to run outside of the first lane and say you're doing 400 metre reps, then there will actually be staggered starts so you still run that exact distance. So just look on the track, there should be a little 400 next to it. Another advantage of running on a track is it's really accurate and quantifiable, so you're not relying on technology to work out how far you've run. Yeah, and then you can measure your progress pretty accurately, so you could replicate the exact same session a few weeks later and see how much you've improved. So when you are running on the track for the first time, just bear in mind your legs might feel it the next day. It's a hard and fast surface. I remember the first time I did it, I can really feel them the day after. So make sure you concentrate with a really good warm down and a thorough recovery. Yeah, and although it is fun to run on a track and it is a great training tool, it is a very hard surface and it's quite unforgiving. So you might want to limit yourself to just one session a week on the track. Well, I personally love running on the track and I get such a buzz after a session. And I must admit, I also quite enjoy the social aspect of running with other people. Yeah, and for me, I just like to feel like I'm going fast. And I don't think there's a surface out there that runs as fast as a track does. So I'd highly recommend getting down to your local track and give it a go. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. To subscribe to GTN, click on the globe. And if you want to see a video on how to run like a pro, click here. And if you want some ideas for a Kenyan Hills session, then watch this video here.